Here is something really important from, of course, friend of the show, one of my favorite authors, one of my favorite journalists, Osita Noanevu. He said, whatever happens next week, Democrats are eventually going to have to contend with the fact that some of the most pivotal voters in the electorate, including more and more non-white voters, think our political norms and institutions are bad and have considered Trump on that basis. This was the underlying resentment that people had towards Hillary Clinton in 2016, something that the Democratic Party has basically brushed aside. Like, they forgot, as though 2016 never happened. And I don't just mean Donald Trump won in 2016. I mean, their underlying resentment towards our institutions existed in 2016. That's why that Donald Trump won. Someone wanted to blow up the system. That's why they fucking took a shot in the dark and went with Donald Trump. And the Democrats ignored it. And here we are still ignoring it. This is really interesting from Zach Carter, another great writer, a columnist for Slate. He says, very interesting that so much of the persuasion game is focused on conservatives who think norms and institutions are good, making them comfortable with the idea of switching parties do you not recognize what's going on we are staring down the barrel of fascism right-wingers are ripping everything apart and using the instability to say shit is fucked up and more and more people are on board with shit is fucked up democrats are desperately trying to hold on to a coalition of people who are like eh, shit's not that fucked up this election cycle was worse than every other election that I've covered. It's terrifying. It is genuinely terrifying that the Democrats are like, no, 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 it's fine. Shit's not that bad. Come on. My anger and my resentment for the Democratic Party will always be because of their capitulation to the right. It will always revolve around their framing of right-wing uh, values and right-wing issues with a liberal veneer. That is what is fucking frustrating about this. I agree, but I worry that the problem is that many in the key, uh, key U.S. political norms and institutions are in fact bad, and there is no way to fix most of the worst ones without a constitutional amendment. The general feeling of cynicism is right. The prevailing diagnoses and solutions these voters are hearing are obviously terrible. It would be ideal if the Democrats began offering others rather than a return to politics as usual. Democrats love running uh, the appeasement route to right-wing charlatans, to like straightforward fascists. They do it over and over and over and over and over again. When they're done doing that, they turn around and they say, what do you expect? They will call her a communist. Guess what, dumbass? They're calling her a communist anyway. The fuck are you talking about? There are plenty of people in this community that already early voted for Kamala Harris. They don't want Donald Trump to win. They went out and they plugged their nose and they fucking voted for Kamala Harris. And they're still just as disappointed as you are. The difference between you and them, on the other hand, is that they're not trying to fucking fantasize about an alternative future, an alternative reality. They're recognizing what is going on. They're recognizing the problem. Uh, I think this speech was the exact same speech that she's delivered time and time again. Nothing different. Uh, nothing new. Clearly, that message has not actually been all that successful. They're, they've been pumping every TV station with ads in all of these key districts reiterating these positions over and over again and it's not it hasn't been good it hasn't been positive at all 